Have you ever had one of those stories that's pretty fun to tell, but halfway through it, every time you realize you can actually feel your mother getting angry? <laughs> so I'm standing at 16,000 feet on Mount Kilimanjaro, waving my cell phone in the air, trying to get the last of the waning signal. Uh, and an email comes in. It's from Sergey. And Sergey is the guy I've hired to guide me on Mount Elbrus in just a week's time. For those of you who don't know, Mount Elbrus is part of the Seven Summits. It's, uh, it's in a small part of southern Russia. You might have heard of it. It's called Chechnya. And Sergey's email reads, I'm going to grab this. And Sergey's email reads, Dear Tyler, things in Russia, not so good. Many terrorists, police everywhere, mountain is closed. I understand if you go home, or I understand uh, you can come if you like, but I understand if you just go home instead. Your friend, Sergey. P.S. No refunds. <laughs> and so me, being a classic cheapskate, read the one line in that email that I cared about, the part that said, P.S. No refunds, and I thought, damn, I better go. And so I did. And a week later, I show up in Russia, and it is just a disaster. Problem after problem, challenge after challenge, a few that I thought were going to land me in jail, luckily they didn't. Uh, but somehow we pull it off, we make it a success, and we get to the top of the mountain, and we come back down, and now I'm standing in line at security in the small airport, and just as I'm about to walk through the airport security, the officer steps in front of me, holds out his hand, and I apologize profusely for the terrible Russian accent you're about to get. He says, you give me a little gift, you go home on plane. <laughs> and I'm like, damn, this dude wants a bribe. Now, a month ago, I have no idea how I would have dealt with a situation like this. I'd never been prepared for it. Uh, that's not entirely true, actually. Probably what I would have done is gone to the closest cash machine, withdrawn my life savings, and given it to this man to make this problem go away. But now that I've been in Russia for a little while, seen how things work a little bit differently here, gotten the lay of the land, I think to myself, no, I bet I can get out of this without paying. And I'm not quite sure how, so I'm thinking, I'm thinking, and the first thing that comes to mind is I'll just pretend like I don't speak English. And so, and so I hold my hand out back to him, and I say, yes, please, gift, thank you. And he turns back to me and says, no, you give me a little gift. You go home on plane. And I'm like, yes, me go home on plane, thank you. And so we do this like 14, 15 times, and this guy is getting, this guy is getting pretty annoyed, all right? And the line behind me is backed up out the door, this tiny little airport. Finally, he gets so fed up, he throws his hands in the air and says, forget it, just go, just go. So I pick up my bags, I say, gift, please, plane, thank you, bye-bye. <laughs> and I get on the plane, and we're off. But what I realized was that adventure actually makes you smarter. It made me smarter. Right? It had given my brain a tool to use to solve a problem that I would not have been able to solve before. An adventure can make you smarter as well, and I want to prove it with just a small little test. So I want you to take a look at these two figures, figure A and figure B, and I want you to tell me which has a longer center line. All right, so raise your hand if you think the line in figure A is longer. Raise your hand if you think it's figure B. All right, some smarty pants in here have already seen this. A lot of people, <laughs> a lot of people, but some people raise their hand for B. Thanks for those who played. For those who played, I'd like to let you know I'm afraid you're both wrong. It's a trick question. The lines are the same length. But why do most people who see this for the first time think that the line in figure B is longer? Well, the reason is because they look like the inside and outside corners of a wall, all right? And when you grow up in the developed world, particularly here in the United States, you spend a lot of time for much of your life looking at the corners of walls. And so this is a trick of perspective. You see figure B, it looks like the, outside, or the inside corner of a wall, and you think to yourself, it must be further away, so it must be longer. But here's what's really fascinating, is that decades of research have shown that if you take this same question and these same figures to other parts of the world, places where people don't spend as much time staring at walls, or places where there are no walls at all, the people there do not struggle with this problem or with this question at all, but they struggle with other ones. 
And so just by exposing yourself to new cultures, putting yourself in new environments, you can actually give your, uh, you can actually give your brain a new tool to use to solve a difficult problem. Adventure really does make you smarter. Now, four years ago, in a moment of incredible underestimation, I decided to run a marathon on every continent. I'd never run a single one before, but I thought, hey, that sounds like fun. <laughs> and so I finished a few months ago in Antarctica, but one of my favorite times was on the Great Wall of China, and here's a picture of that. Now, this is fun, but it's not really the point of the story. The point of the story is that when you stay at a hotel in China, the little box that they put on your bed that says intimacy kit, no matter how fascinating, no matter how much your curiosity is telling you to open the box, open the box, open the box, right? you must understand that this is not complimentary. And this is something I learned in a somewhat surprising fashion the next morning. So I'm sitting on a bus, I'm sitting on a bus, waiting to go back to the airport. There's about 50 people on board. I'm recently single, and there's two cute girls from New York sitting behind me, and I'm like, hey, girls, what's up? Chatting them up. <laughs> when this woman from the hotel runs onto the bus, waving a paper in the air, says, I need Tyler Trevorn, that's me, to come to the front of the bus to settle his account. He has not paid for his Chinese sex oil. <laughs> and that's exactly how she said it. And so my face goes completely white. I think my heart stops for a second, which is an out, I believe. I think if you die, you don't have to pay. I'm not totally clear on the rules. <laughs> but anyways, a minute later, I'm standing at the front of the bus, uh, giving this woman my information so that she can charge me for my Chinese sex oil, which I didn't even get to use, by the way. <laughs> when I have this pretty important realization, and that is that this is the most embarrassing moment of my life. <laughs> And the reason why that was such an important moment, an important realization, was because just a few hours later, everyone had left the bus and gone on with their life, and nobody cared anymore, including me. And just a few months later, back at home, I'm getting ready to launch this coffee company that's going to be shipping coffee all over the country, uh, except I have a problem. We're, we're launching tomorrow, and I don't have boxes, and I don't have coffee. And so I make this plan. I make this plan, and I go to the post office, and I grab every single box they've got, and I go to my local grocery store, I find the coffee aisle, I sit down in the coffee aisle with my boxes, and I start ripping coffee off of the shelf and putting them into boxes to see how this is all going to work. Now, a few months ago, before I'd had this misadventure in China, I don't think I'd have even come up with an idea like this. And if I had, I certainly would not have done it, all right? Because I would have been very concerned about what other people thought of me. I would have been very concerned about being embarrassed. But do you know what I thought in this moment with my problem instead? I thought, meh, it's been worse. <laughs> and so I did it. And do you know what other people actually thought when they saw me sitting there in the aisle? They thought I worked there, <laughs> right? Like, people kept coming up to me, like this dude was like, hey, do you know where the rice aroni is? And I was like, uh, not really my department. Do you need some coffee? But adventure had made me stronger, right? It had made me stop worrying about what other people thought of me so that I could get busy doing the things that were important to me. And adventure can make you stronger, too. Because when you take a step outside of your comfort zone, it follows you. Every step you take, it comes with you. And what research has shown throughout much of the animal throughout much of the animal kingdom, in fact, but specifically for humans, is that things that were once old, or once, once new and scary, quickly become old and routine. And I'm sure you can all relate to a time in your life when something seemed very new and uncomfortable, and now that you've done it a few times, it's really no big deal. And this is how adventure makes you stronger. In the early 1900s, there was this dude named Ernest Shackleton, and he was a British explorer, and he wanted to be the first person ever to go to the South Pole. And so he took out this funny advertisement in a local London newspaper. I'm just going to let you read it. And ladies, I apologize for the gender specificity. It was a little different time back then. Right? Who's going to respond to that? Right? Most reports 
Most reports say that somewhere between three and 5,000 people responded to this. That's crazy, right? And the reason why is because Shackleton had played very well on this concept that I like to call big dream influence. Like he wanted to go to the South Pole. He wanted to be the first person there. His idea, his dream was so big that people couldn't help but notice. Right? And when you do something that people can't help but notice, once they see it, they can't help but get interested. And once they're interested, it's only a matter of time before they want to be a part of it. Most people, you know, just by the laws of nature, set pretty average goals. Right? If you took a group, a uh, random sampling of 100 different people, and put them in a line, and this would never work in this room, of course, right? Because everyone here is amazing, has big goals. Just trying to get some speaker points, right? But if you took a random sampling of 100 people and asked them, what's your biggest goal in life? You'd probably find that somewhere between 80 to 90 of them would have answers that are similarly as interesting or disinteresting as the case may be today. And that's okay, right? There are many goals you'll have in your life that are personally meaningful and personally fulfilling that are completely uninteresting to anybody else. But if there's something that you want to do that's going to take a team, something that you're going to do that needs help from others, you must use Big Dream Influence to capitalize to get people's attention, to make your ideas more attractive, because adventure makes you more attractive. It's true, right? Try to imagine if, try to imagine if Shackleton's ad had read something more like this. Right? You're probably thinking like, oh, I don't know how cool potato bugs are and like trying to lose a few pounds, so... Right? When you, if, you want to, if you want to do something big with a team, if you want to get people on board, you have to set your idea apart. You have to make it something bigger. Right? The people are not going to be asking themselves, right, do I take time away from my thing to go work on this? Instead, rather than making that comparison, they're going to say, I can still do my thing, but I can also come along and go do this big thing too, because that's very exciting. So when you come to a fork in the road, take it. This is one of my favorite quotes from one of my favorite baseball players, Yogi Berra. And Yogi had a lot of pretty funny quotes in his day, but this one is my favorite because it has an important message. And I think what Yogi was trying to say was that when you don't know what to do, do something, right? Step outside your comfort zone. Answer the call to adventure. While I was preparing for this talk, I'm kind of a, kind of a data nerd, so I was looking at a lot of different research on um, the death rate, and I was looking at research on uh, happiness reports and on life regrets. And I started putting together the numbers from these, different, from these different reports. You know what I learned? I learned that just by the time I'm done talking today, 47 people in the, right here in the United States will have died unhappy. 2.5 million by the end of the year. And their biggest regret will be that they didn't live a life true to themselves. They didn't step outside of their comfort zone. They didn't answer that call to adventure when it presented itself. And I had to ask myself if the reason that is is because it felt like such a big commitment. It felt like it was something too big to do. But what is big? Right? We just talked about these big ideas, and that's great. But can you do anything really big? Or is big just the culmination of many small things? Right? Going to Russia and climbing a mountain, that's big, kind of, I guess. But you can't just go to Russia, right? To go to Russia, you have to get on a plane. And to get on a plane, you have to buy a ticket. And to buy a ticket, you have to, uh, you have to save some money, right? And to save some money, you have to decide that that's important to you. So what I want to challenge you to do today is think of this big, crazy idea that you have in your head. Everybody here has one. I know they do. And I want you to think of one small thing that you can do before you leave here today that will take you one step closer to it. But more important than that, I want you to right now tell yourself that that's important to you. And when you do, you'll find, I, th I believe, that you're well on the way to making yourself smarter, stronger, and more attractive. Thank you.